Okay, so good morning, everybody, or something. I wake up quite late because I'm a computer geek like everybody else. Um, my name is Peter Sundekolm Soppi. I'm half Norwegian, half Finnish, living in Malmo in Sweden, which is on the Danish border. Um, and I actually live, I live a bit in Berlin as well, so I feel at home, thank you. Um, I'm most famous for the Pirate Bay, uh, and I usually come and talk about the Pirate Bay, so I'm gonna actually start with that as usual. So you know what I'm talking about when I talk about Flutter. Uh, a little bit of my background, as I said, I'm multinational like everybody else nowadays. Uh, but when I was about nine years old, I uh, got my first computer. It was an Amiga 500, and uh, in order to actually use the computer, I had to have a software to use. I had to have games to play and all of that. And when you're nine years old, you don't have a lot of money, so everybody just copies. And we never thought about that as being something which could be bad or being wrong. And uh, now I'm 31, and I realized that it's not bad, it's good, and you should copy. Uh, everything I know about computers and everything I do is because I copied something in the beginning. So uh, I became a bit older, as I said, and uh, I wanted to help other people learn things, as I did. And I realized that you need to share in order to actually uh, learn something. So in Sweden, there was an initiative called Piratbyrån that I joined. And the background of Piratbyrån was actually that you had uh, the anti Piratbyrån, which was Hollywood's different uh, companies that uh, set up a lobby organization talking about the bad things of file sharing. And being good people at copy, uh, you actually take something which is bad and make it better. So Pirat Biron was took the name of Anti Pirat Biron and removed the Anti to make it a bit better. And this is what we do all the time. We also uh, did different projects in Pirat Biron besides just writing articles and, and things like that. Uh, we went, uh, went out on 1st of May in Sweden, where everybody uh, wants better wages and better salaries and, and stuff like that. And we said, we want a better society. And in order to get that, you actually have to have 100 megabit internet. And uh, that was our parole in, on 1st of May. And in Sweden, most people have 100 megabit of internet, and that's only because of us and nothing else. We take credit for a lot of cool things. Um, one of the other projects we started uh, was the Pirate Bay. Uh, which today is quite huge. Uh, it's one of the 90 biggest websites in the world. Uh, the tracking system of the Pirate Bay, which is the system used for actually sharing information, torrents and so on, um, is, is closed. But when it was at its peak, uh, it, it took about 65, 70% of all torrents in the world was actually passed on through the Pirate Bay tracker. An interesting thing is that BitTorrent traffic on the internet is about 80% of all the traffic. That means that Pirate Bay was actually almost half of all of the internet's traffic. So Pirate Bay was running with three people, half of the internet. And the problem here is that we're not the average type of people. So when Frederick was drunk, or Gottfried was almost drunk, whatever you want to call it, uh, and the Pirate Bay went down, half of the internet's traffic just vanished because nobody could fix the Pirate Bay. And like everybody else, Pirate Bay starts small. You know, Google had their Lego box. Uh, we had a shoe box. This is the blue uh, server here. It's actually the, the first server we had. It's in a shoe box that we actually couldn't afford, so we got it for free as well. Um, we had Pirate Bay in Mexico, because Gottfried was working for the government somehow. I don't know the details. Um, and uh, we found that running servers in Mexico is quite bad, because if someone finds out that you're running an interesting system, they will start uh, pressuring you for a bit more money. So the electrical company said, we want 1,000 euros you know, extra this week, otherwise we'll shut down the power for your whole company, and they did. So we moved to Sweden. And in uh, Sweden, where all of us lived anyhow, we uh, started getting quite famous. The thing with the Pirate Bay in Sweden was that at the time we, for the first time, had enough bandwidth to actually build a bigger, a bigger website. And all of the other torrent and file sharing networks were being shut down. And the reason why they were being shut down was not because of you know, legal issues, it was more about legal pressure. So people running file sharing networks were usually 16, 17 year old kids, 
and got a letter from lawyers saying you need to shut down your website or we're going to sue you for all of the money in the world, they usually shut down. Um, but we don't. We never shut down anything we do, except if it's broken and we don't want to fix it. Um, we sent letters back to the American lawyers saying things like, well, you have problems with copyright law in the US and blah, blah, blah. And we sent a picture of this small polar bear and said, these uh, are actually running around in the streets of Sweden trying to eat us. That's a problem for us that we are more interested in solving. Thank you. And we sent maps showing, here's the US, here is Europe. Sweden is part of Europe. It's not on your jurisdiction. And the lawyers didn't really understand if we were joking or not, so they, they became quite upset. And the boring thing was, we, we found this really, really funny to reply to their letters in ways that didn't, didn't really expect. So uh, it was quite sad when they stopped sending those letters to us. And this is one of my favorite letters that I just want to, to brag about, because this is actually a German company called Linotype. Maybe you know them. They uh, make most of the fonts you have in your computers. They own Helvetica and all of those. They sent a threading letter saying, we found this torrent on Pirate Bay. It allows users to download all of our fonts. And they're, they're very expensive, so we don't want that to happen. And they said, they sent this letter and another contract that we had to sign saying, um, you will not allow anyone to download our uh, or torrents that refer to our uh, fonts you will have to pay us 25,000 euros otherwise, you know, uh, for the trespassing and all of this. And we wanted to be, you know, messy with them, so we sent back uh, the same letter. So we changed that they had to pay us 25,000 uh, euros uh, for making full of the, out of themselves. So we just copied all of the letter, basically. And, of course, we used all of their fonts. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So the problem with being smart as we are, being funny as we are, is that when you're doing something this good, you don't get a reply, which sucks. Uh, so I'm going to skip a bit here in the story, because you probably heard about the Pirate Bay and the big raid. You know, Hollywood companies went to the White House. The White House forced the Swedish government to come over, and they said, um, I don't skip it at all. I just talk about the whole story. Never mind. Um, so the White House said that we're going to put Sweden on the trade sanction list with Cuba. So you can't actually trade with any, uh, um, with any uh, US companies if you don't shut down the Pirate Bay. Politicians in Sweden are not allowed to go into a single case and say that you have to do this and this to the police. But they did anyhow. And in the end, uh, Pirate Bay was shut down six weeks after the Minister of Justice actually visited the US. Uh, and. Uh, what happened is that the Pirate Party in Sweden, that was founded just a couple of months before, got a lot of votes. They got a lot of support, supporters, and they're one of the biggest polit political parties in Sweden right now. Uh, they got 7.2% of the European Union election votes, so they have two people in parliament. Uh, and they joined the Green Group, which I think is great, because um, I vote green as well, uh, and forced the Green Group to agree with them on all of the issues surrounding copyright and so on in, in the European Union. And the Green Group is quite big, so that means that a lot of the European Union now votes pirates when it comes to the issues that we are concerned about, like privacy and so on. And at the same time, uh, the, us from Pirate Bay, we started going around speaking at events like this, and, and we were in Vanity Fair and Wired and all of these newspapers, and uh, it's quite fun. Um, we met, this is me in Brazil, I met with a friend of mine. He's, he's the president of Brazil for a couple of more months. Um, it was quite funny because I never met him before, and uh, we went to the same conference, and he came to me and gave me a big hug. And the first thing he said is that, hey, Peter, Brazil does not have an extradition treaty with Sweden. Uh, which is quite nice to, to know that I can never be extradited if I actually go to Brazil, if I actually end up losing in Sweden. Um, and all of this is based on the notion that money needs to be transferred between parties uh, for someone to actually make a living. Uh, all of these companies that wanted us to shut down only wanted it because we kind of ruined their business model. And they were saying, you know, the internet needs to change, we need to make money for, uh, like we did before, and we don't need to change anything. The internet needs to change. 
And at the same time, we as users of the internet and you know, consumers, creators, call it whatever you want, we had too much information. We had so much information, it was more a question for us, like how could we actually sort all of this information and make it uh, interesting for us? And we had so much music that we could never listen to all of the music at the same time as the record companies want us to pay like one euro for each song that we, we have. And not even people from Norway, which is a really rich country, can afford that. Other companies, other record companies, started realizing that file sharing is actually something good. So in Sweden, we have a large coalition of small record companies that are really independent labels and so on that are really successful. Uh, they started selling things like this. This is a music box, one of the oldest musical inventions, uh, with hits from some of their artists. So you could buy this instead of a CD, and you can play it by just uh, manually uh, rotating the arm and get some music out of it, at the same time as the music was free. And they made more money from this than they ever made before on selling CDs. So there's a lot of new thinking when it comes to business models on the internet. And all of these issues are very important, not only because it's important to, to have evolution, as I want to call it, but it's also that we have new things coming along that will change not only how we uh, participate in, for instance, music and, and movies. It's, it's easy for the uh, companies, the record companies and so on, say that we're just interested in things for free. But with inventions like this, this is the RepRap, which is a 3D printer it can actually let you download physical objects and print them at home. For instance, a friend of mine, he was uh, at a party and drank too much beer, and he wanted to drink a glass of water the, other, the day after, and he couldn't find a glass. So he actually pirated a glass from the internet and printed it so he could have a glass of water. And this is, might sound strange, but this is the way uh, it's probably going to be in the future. This is the vision we have to make uh, as a place where we can actually do things like this legally. Because if the companies today that are trying to control the discourse and the discussion surrounding intellectual property have their way, that's going to be illegal. So one of these things that, we're, that I came up with is Flatter, which is one of my ideas on how to actually make people able to share money, because I'm very interested in the sharing concept. And Money today is, like everything else, digital information. We don't give cash to each other that much anymore. Uh, the, most of the governments want to ban that because they want to look what you do, but that's a different story. Uh, flatter is a wordplay of flat rate and, and, uh, and flattering someone, which in English means to give someone a bit of credit. And since I'm talking so much, I'm actually going to show you a video instead, which uh, shows everything quite nice. On the internet, you can create or take part of content. When you create, there's not really a good way to get money for the content. And when you find something you like, there's no good way to show love for it. This problem is universal. For bloggers and their readers, musicians and their listeners, photographers, film creators, programmers, and so on. So we created Flatter to solve this. This is how it works. Every month, the Flatter user pays a small fee. Let's compare it with birthday cake. When you have a cake, you want to give slices to the people you like. Flatter helps you do that. If you've created something, you can add a Flatter button to your content. Or if you find something you like, and there's a Flatter button besides the content, you click it. Each button is a counter showing how many people are willing to give cake for the content. At the end of the month, your cake is sliced in as many pieces as you clicked flatter buttons. Each slice is then given to the correct content creator. If you click 10 buttons, the 10 creators will get a tenth of the cake each. If you click 100 buttons, the 100 creators will get a hundredth of the cake. The slices might be small, but every one's slices will all add up. Or as we say in Sweden, Många bäckar små blir en stor å. As a creator, you will get money you've never got before. As a consumer, you can help creators out with just a small click. If you haven't guessed it, flatter is a wordplay of flatter and flat rate. With a flat rate fee, you can flatter people. So, okay, so the problem with being here today is that flatter is still in a closed beta. 
The video shows everything you need to know about it, really, so I could just go from here now. Uh, but I'm going to show you some of the sneak peeks of how the system actually works. Uh, first of all, the idea is not only to share money uh, when it comes to content. I don't like the word content. The idea is to make a system in place where it actually changes a bit of your behavior on the internet. Uh, most of the internet is binary. We have zeros and we have ones. And usually when you are interested in some sort of information, you evaluate how much it's worth to you. So this song is worth one euro, this information, this blog article is worth so and so much. With Flatter, we kind of remove that thinking because you pay once a month and that money will be divided no matter how many uh, buttons or Flatter buttons you click. So in essence, this becomes binary. You have the one, I like it. You have the zero, I don't like it. You don't have to put a price tag on any type of information anymore. That is our goal. And when I talk about information, I actually want people in the future to be able to walk into a gallery, find a nice painting, and kind of flatter it with a cell phone or something like that. So we're interested in lots of more things than just blogs and stuff like that. Another interesting concept is also that Within Flatter, everybody is the same type of user. Uh, I come from Sweden. We have a socialist background. Uh, we don't like classes in Sweden. Uh, I'm not talking about classes in school. I talk about classes in society. Uh, we don't like classes in school either. That's another story. Uh, but what is actually happening is that as a user, you're also a receiver. You're a receiver and you're a giver. That sounds very gay, but that's a different thing. Um, but there, the concept is that no longer do you have to be a blog writer to uh, actually earn money from a blog. It's totally uh, possible that you, as a blog reader, uh, could uh, get flattered for a comment that you put. So even though people don't like the blog entry, they could like your comment you wrote about it and flatter that. And there's no um, price tags. It doesn't cost them more. It doesn't cost them less. It's just another click. You like it, and it's quality. And this is actually a typical Flatter page on, on Flatter. This button is like Dig. Most people probably know Dig here, so I'm not going into details. You can put a, one of these buttons on your website or whatever. There are also an API you can use in order to uh, make other things than just buttons. Uh, we're looking forward to people implementing Flatter IDs in MP3 files so you can actually play a, a song in iTunes or in Winamp. Uh, with a Flatter plugin and just give money to the creator. Maybe in Spotify or Last.fm, there would be a Flatter button to the artist to give them money instead of uh, the record company. And as uh, a user of Flatter, you can go into the dashboard. And here you can see how much money you have on your account, how much money you're going to spend each month. And you can see transaction history that you've received money, you've given money and all of that, the, the typical stuff you would consider from a, a site like this. And I know I have like half an hour, uh, but I'm already finished. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm opening up for questions. Thanks. Gibt es Fragen? Um, Mikrofone uh, stehen in der Reihe hinter dir. This is actually not my shortest speech. I was in Brazil, I was trying to tell you before, and I had a speech, and, and I was prepared for it, and then afterwards, they said, oh, you have your second speech about technology, and I was not prepared for it, but I managed to do eight minutes, uh, and then after questions, it ended up being one and a half hours, so I hope there's gonna be a lot of questions today as well. Okay, uh, so I really, really like your concept, but um, what I don't like about it is that Flatter is becoming uh, like a bank. So is there a possible way to decentralize this? And also, is the code open? The code will probably be open uh, in the end when we're... It's like the Pirate Bay. We, don't, uh, we never released the Pirate Bay code because it was bad quality. Flatter will probably be higher quality, but, and, and we are going to encourage people to do something similar. Uh, but there's also security issues in that. And yes, there is a problem with this being centralized, but we haven't found a better method to make this without being centralized. But I will encourage people to do something similar, but the problem is then if people do something similar, there's gonna be the, you know, a race for having a crucial mass. So um, you need an open standard for internet money 
we need an open standard for everything. It's uh, like, I, I, I hate Facebook for the reason that they own your profile. Uh, this is not really relevant, but at the same time it is. A friend of mine uh, added content to Facebook that Facebook didn't like. It was a picture of uh, male uh, genitalia, and they were really upset about it. Uh, so they deleted him, and he no longer get invited to parties and things like that because f Facebook is where you invite people today. So he's really lonely because he has no Facebook profile. And that is a real problem today. And the same will probably go uh, be a problem for Flatter, that if too many people start using Flatter and, and, and start uh, relying upon that, there needs to be some sort of open standard where we can uh, shift the power back to the users. So I'm curious, how to get an invite? Uh, I have 20 invites for Republica. <laughs> oh, wow, this is fun. <laughs> sign okay. me up. OK, so I'm, I'm going to do a, a small thing. I, I've made it very easy to sign up for Republica people today. I've made 20 invites. The name of the invite is Republica, and then 01 to 20. So just go and use the invites. So Republica 01, 02, and so on. And that's 20 invites for you. So. <laughs> I'm not online right now, so I won't uh, qualify. Okay. Uh, on the very last slide you showed, there was an interesting relation of a flatter fee to the total amount. It was five euros flatter fee and a total balance of 17 euros. It's quite an interesting ratio. That's going to be like that? Well, uh, this is uh, from the, the beta version. And uh, the flatter uh, fee was actually what I decided that I wanted to give that month. And it's not really a fee, because it's the monthly allowance, the, the, the amount of money you want to give to people. We're going to take a small portion, and we're going to try to make it as small as possible. Uh, but the five euros is actually the thing you give to other people. So could you give us an idea what the actual fee is, or how much it will cost for the user? Uh, for from our to pay flatter or to pay other people? <laughs> What, what either uh, the people who donate or who spend money on Flutter or the people who receive the money have to uh, pay as a fee for you. Okay. So right now, the thing is, you have to put in two euros a month uh, as a minimum, and we will take 10%. We're trying to make that lower, um, but that depends also on, on uh, what we see under the beta period. So, and, and from our fee, we will also do some sort of revenue sharing with content providers, that uh, distributors, rather. So if you have a, a blog network or something that you allow people to blog, you could actually get, for uh, finally, uh, another way than just ads to actually get paid. So uh, I don't know if people use Bambooser in Germany. It's a Swedish website where you can actually stream videos for free from your cell phone. They uh, ne need things like this in order to actually survive. And this is one method we think could actually give them money. Um, there's one micropayment service which is already out of the beta phase called Kachingle. And I was wondering, um, what do you see the difference between those two services, except that they also have this monthly fee of $5, and then you can decide how much you uh, want to pay for the individual payment. And, you know, uh, I think they, they take uh, also a small percentage fee, and I think that would be interesting to see when are you getting out of the beta phase and opening up. Are there any time plans for that? Yeah, so uh, the difference between Kachingle and Flatter, besides that we have a much better name than they have, they end in the typical Google thing, they end with Kachingle, and we end with the Flickr thing with the missing E. So that's the big difference. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, the problem with the Kachingle is that I think they're going to have a hard time to reach critical mass. I wish them the best. Uh, they, they, they started with saying we are copycats, even though I've been talking about Flatter for three years, and they started last year. Uh, which is quite kind of funny. And also, if you have the concept that uh, everybody else is a copycat and you're upset with them, you shouldn't really be into the business of helping people sharing things. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I think it's good that there's more competitors out there, and I hope uh, that we will find one solution that works quite well instead of having no solution. Uh, I may, maybe I missed that, but do you have a time frame on when the Sorry. beta is sort of going to be ended? And yeah, OK. So right now we're in this, op uh, this closed beta, and we're going to do the open beta, which is going to invite everybody who asked to be signed up uh, within a month or so. And then in two months, hopefully, we're going to open up to the public uh, and then try to get as many people as possible to use the service. Did you have another question? <laughs> Or tri yeah, okay. Um, I'm trying to get an invite. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, I was a little late. Uh, that's why I'm not so sure if you already talked about it. 
uh, some journalists see a huge uh, contradiction between your engagement with um, Pirate Bay and with Flatter. Um, could you explain the, the ideological connection okay, inside so your, your head between them? Okay, so uh, I think it's, it's the same. Uh, Pirate Bay and Flatter are uh, the same values. We want to open up uh, for the mid without the middlemen. We don't want the big corporations controlling uh, content and information anymore. So Pirate Bay was a, a way that you could actually share information, share content with people uh, without someone deciding what you should share. And with Flatter, you could actually uh, set up a system where you can send money between people without uh, having a middleman that decides which content is good for you. Uh, so it's, it's about an open platform, uh, and we have never been against people actually earning money from uh, being, uh, making culture or art or something like that. We've been very for it, but we don't want big corporations controlling the culture and art. So in, in that way, Flatter and, and Pirate Bay are extension of each other's. And, and for me, it's very important that everything I do is politically uh, valid for me as a person. So this is just an extension of, of my thinking politically. Okay. Gibt es weitere Fragen? Um, I just have the, the question: Is there any are there any plans that you will extend it? Uh, away from just, uh, well, money, of course it's intriguing to get money, uh, into something I call uh, social cloud, that you have a renome that you can somehow monetize. So, yeah, of course, uh, Flatter has a uh, top list of most interesting things, blogs and uh, tagged like this and this and in each country and so on. So, we, of course, we do a, a, a site similar to Dig, uh, but with the extra added bonus of money. Uh, but, and, and we're going to open it up for APIs so you can implement it and show people. You can brag off on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. You're just flattered and help people get content like that. Uh, we're really interested in helping people to get the word of their interesting material out there. So, yes, information spreading is good. Um, how do you handle usage data? So you're storing data who liked what or who flattered what or do you delete data after you paid the money? Uh, right now, we haven't uh, set up the deletions uh, system. Uh, we're still, <laughs> still making the system. But we are, I I'm putting my reputation on Flatter, and I'm, I'm one of the people that are most concerned about privacy on the internet, probably. So, uh, you know, I run VPN services and so on. So, uh, we are very much for privacy, and uh, we're going to be very open with what we store, how long we store it, and we're going to try to minimize it as much as possible. Today, uh, if you don't want to actually receive money, if you just want to help people out and, and give money, you don't have to give us anything else than an email. And you could, if you want to use uh, one of our other services, which is an anonymous email uh, that you don't have to register for and then use that or something else like that. We don't really care as long as you help out and someone else is already has all of the information about your identity, otherwise you can't have a bank account and so on. So if you send money to Flatter from PayPal, they know who you are, so we don't care. We don't want to know. Right now, the primary motivation for users is to, to sign up simply to do good. Um, is there anything else how you motivate um, users in the future to sign up for your service? Well. There is this thing that we want, to con we want to change the concept on who is receiving um, creativity or who is a cre creative person. So as I talked about before, for instance, if you put uh, a possibility on blogs to flatter a comment and not just of the blog post, that will actually make it more interesting for everybody to participate because everything you do on the internet, you, everybody likes and everybody comments on things. You don't have to be very bright to do that. You can be really stupid or you can be very bright. It doesn't matter. It's, no, uh, it's a very low uh, threshold before you actually start creating on the internet. So, and we want to encourage that, and we want those people to also be able to benefit from it and get a sense of satisfaction. And since this is kind of a classless uh, system, you know, everybody has to participate to, to receive. So. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Okay, so no more questions? Are they already out? Oh. Uh, write on, uh, on, on Twitter with the uh, Flatter hashtag and probably someone at the office, I think they're still there. 
they have to be. It's only 6 p.m. in Sweden. Uh, we work quite late. Uh, they will probably make some more if, if you're very nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a question for you. Um, you said, let's say I made my mind up and uh, I, I put up two euros for a monthly, for my monthly cake, so to say, and I only click once. Um, is there a way that I can decide afterwards that I don't want to pay the two euros to one person? No. Right. Do you have statistics to back up usage from the closed beta period? Sorry, two. To back up usage, what uh, amount was usually received or something like that? Yeah, right now it's been very weird because I, uh, I got uh, 20 f uh, fathers on my own blog, on a blog post on my blog, and I received 9 euros for that. So that's quite high, and I don't think it's going to be that high. But that, if it's that high, I'm really happy. That's the only uh, uses the stats I have right now. Okay. Vielen Dank, Peter Sonder. Okay. So thank you.